And it's a little bit chillier out here today. Here, look at all this. Look at these trees, beautiful. So I'm a little bit in the future here right now. Future Josh, just gonna explain this vlog to you real quick before we get into it, as it was a little bit all over the place. Uh, this vlog was Mother's Day weekend, so we started off, uh, Britt and I, going into Winnipeg with Theo, and we went to the Leaf, which we'll explain more in the video. So we went out there, and then later on, the next day, uh, we had to go out and get a new lawnmower. So I added that on to the end of the video, and then after that, we took off to get a head start on our trip towards Kenora. So then we get in the truck towards the end of the vlog, and we go out to Kenora and get ready to get loaded the next day. So it's sort of a three-part vlog. First, the Mother's Day trip into Winnipeg, and then going to get a lawnmower, and then getting the truck ready and getting back on the road. So with that being said, enjoy the video. Mother's Day, I brought Britt to the Leaf, which is a, uh, I believe it's a botanical garden, that's what they call it. It's a massive indoor garden in Winnipeg. It has plants from all over the world. It's pretty cool. This is just by uh, the zoo in Assiniboine Park. There's also a lot of outdoor gardens to explore. They got a river in here and everything. Wow. Pretty cool. Ready? Very high and very hot. We're on the third level. We're gonna go through the butterfly. What did it? What was it called? The butterfly gardens? Something like that. Yeah. Something about, something about butterflies. Something about butterflies. Look how big this is. It's there's another one in there that we haven't gone to go see yet. It's the Mediterranean. It is really hot though. So if you come to the leaf, be ready to sweat. Hot enough for you? Yeah. Suddenly they're all around us. They just have them flying loose in here. Oh, here comes one. We're not supposed to touch them. But let's see if I can. <laughs> I do not have a green thumb. <laughs> <laughs> I 
That does look pretty cool, though. Have you guys ever seen such a big change table? Okay, Josh, lay down. Let's change your diaper. This is, this is for changing adult diapers. Like, this is an operating table. Look at this thing. <laughs> is this for if you have like quadruplets? We came here into the, the family bathroom and we saw that. Like, it's an operating table. It's huge. Or like if you need a nap real quick? A nap? You know, they could have made this place a lot better, but they, they blew the budget on a change table. <laughs> I mean, you know, it probably is for, for uh, developmentally delayed individuals changing their undergarments. Well, now you make me feel bad for yeah. laughing. Well, we're not laughing. It's an object. We're not laughing at the people. We're laughing okay. at the object. It was just a lot bigger than I was expecting. I've never seen a change table this big before. I don't have any but how big are some of these babies? I mean, he's a big baby. I thought he was a big baby. <laughs> okay, it, it, there's probably a very good reason for it. I shouldn't laugh. We're not trying to be insensitive. Buying a new lawn mower today. A push mower. We need one with a bagger. And the one we have now, well, first of all, it doesn't have a bag. Second of all, it doesn't really work right anymore. It's so old. So the time has come. We've also got issues with our sewer today. Our sewer's backing up because our, uh, I think it's called a pill valve, pill switch, in our tank stopped working. So we're working on that today as well. A whole bunch of things going on. I was supposed to go to work today, but that got delayed because now we gotta wait for the plumbers to show up. And while we're waiting for the plumbers to show up, Britt is at home watching our son and I'm gonna take this opportunity while we're waiting to quickly run here and grab this mower because uh, we've needed this for a little while already. I'm at Canadian Tire in Steinbeck. Apparently the rest of the town is also at Canadian Tire. It is busy here, busy, busy. I'm gonna park right here. This is my spot. It's at the back, but you know, sort of center back. And it's the last spot, so I only get one neighbor. Only one person to worry about dinging up my doors. Back in the zone. There we go. We got the spot. So, there's Canadian Tire. For my American friends watching, Canadian Tire is sort of like Fleet Farm and Tractor Supply combined with some home hardware stores. You got some cooking stuff in there as well. Lots of Christmas stuff at Christmas. It's a... Uh, a sports goods store, tools, a little bit of everything. They also sell lawnmowers at a very reasonable price. So I'm gonna go and see what they got. Like I said, what we're looking for is just a simple push mower that's gonna last with a good size bag on it. The bigger the bag, the better. Got everything here. One second, one second. I gotta hold. I gotta hold you guys with this hand. So I gotta hold everything else with. It's always something. Always something. See, they got some park right up front already. Where would their lawnmowers be? <laughs> Definitely not down here, but I wanted to show you. See, they got like kitchen supplies too, right? Air fryers, grills, pots and pans. Sort of like a catch-all store, right? A little bit of everything. Right at the end of the pots and pans, you got the air compressors and tool cases. And the winner is... This one. It's actually a pretty good price too. 
It's only 339 as opposed to all the other ones. It's the cheapest one, almost. It's a couple of cheaper ones. We won't go. Well, those are electric. And those are the gas powered one. 174 cc rear wheel drive self propelled 22 inch blade or 22 inch deck 21 inch blade. And it has the bag. Okay. So I had to get some oil for it. Because it comes without oil, apparently. And uh, bought it. So 300 and. Uh, Three hundred and thirty-nine ninety-nine plus taxes. The tax man wants his share of my money. You know, I get paid the money, I get taxed on the money. Then I spend the money, I get taxed again on the same money. Tax, 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 tax. We've got it all put together now. Gave it a good test, so you can tell it's a little dirty already. Chevy, what do you think? Things noisy. I'm scared. Don't worry, I'll take care of the mowing. Frank, what do you think? Who are you? So this is our old mower. You can tell it's a lot smaller. This was a uh, Briggs and Stratton 500 series, 140 cc. And this is a certified 174 cc. And it's also got the bagger on it. That one did not. The bagger was very important to us because uh, we need to bag the lawn. Because if we don't, we have a couple of dogs here that will eat it, all the grass clippings. Speaking of, Chevy, that's not food. Stop doing this, man. That's why we got a bagger. Because he'll eat all the grass clippings. So will this guy. But I think he's just copying Chevy. But anyways, these two guys will eat all the grass clippings back here and then they'll go into the house and they'll throw up on our floors. Unacceptable. So this, he must have, must have fallen off the tree here or something. Just throw that back there. But yeah, this is the new mower. Tested it out, I'm very happy with it. Cuts very well. It does have like a, a motor. So it's self-propelled, is what they call it. I don't know if I really like that though. Because it's only got one speed. And it's a little bit faster than I like to walk and if the grass is a little bit longer. I mean, it's not a big deal, you just don't use it then and you push it manually, but it, it was the cheaper one. I, I picked one of the cheaper ones, as you saw. So I guess if I would have spent, you know, a few hundred more dollars, we could have had like a variable speed self-propelled, like one, two, three speeds. Now we just got one speed and it's just, Go! It's the only speed. But it's better than that red one, because that red one isn't self-propelled at all. So it is an upgrade. I'm holding on to this thing for now, because it still works. So it's always good to have a good bushwhacker around, right? And this is our good mower for our yard. And you can see here, I've already mowed. It did a great job. Don't pay attention to all of our spots on our lawn. I'm working on it. Don't judge me. I know you're judging me, stop it. Stop it. Okay, I'm trying. But we have dogs, so I have to be very careful what fertilizer I use back here. It has to be non-toxic. And uh, it's our first summer here, so we're just getting, we're still getting settled in. We're getting used to this place, getting used to how the lawn grows. But it's uh, doing pretty good, and this mower is definitely all we need for here. So you've seen it in the shop. We still have that big zero point turn mower. We're not gonna need that here. So we're gonna be selling that this summer sometime. We'll, uh, we'll see if we can find any buyers for it. Anybody around here, if you're looking for a nice uh, Cub Cadet zero point turn mower, uh, I'll do a little video on it eventually at the shop there, but I'm gonna be cleaning it all up, making it all look, it, it pretty much is brand new. So I just gotta wash it pretty much. It's brand new. I've used it maybe like four or five times. It's a shame because I've always wanted a zero point turn mower like that, but now we don't need it. This is our yard. This is all we're ever going to need to take care of. We're never going to move again. At least we're pretty set on that. So, uh, Chevy, what are you eating? Wiener? That's what I thought. 
we won't need the big zero pointer anymore. So. That's that. It's gonna be sad to say goodbye to it. Like even just thinking about it and saying it out loud to you guys on the vlog right now, that we're gonna be selling it. I've always wanted one and now I finally got one and now I don't need it. <laughs> Anyways, if, you, uh, if you're if you interested in it, uh, I'll be selling it for around uh, $3,200, I think is what we're gonna list it at. Uh, you, we bought it a couple of years ago and like I said, it's brand new. So I'll tell you more about that in the future, I guess. If you're interested, truckerjoshvlogs at gmail.com. Let me know if you're in the area and you need a zero point turn. We got one. I will reluctantly sell it to you. Come on, guys. Come on. Uh, I'm hoping that a lot of these uh, dead spots will sort of grow over as the summer progresses. We're still in springtime. And I, it, it just started growing, right? So I'm hoping it'll fill in. And if it doesn't fill in, there's a couple of uh, natural and non-toxic fertilizers that I've already looked up that I'll use. That once we get that fence done in the back there, and over the years, we're really gonna perfect this yard. But one thing at a time. Hey, Frank, come on inside, man. The door's open, literally open for you. Just for you, all for you, my man. Come on, you're almost here. You're almost here, come on, Frank, come on. Don't make me come get you, come on, you're so close. You got this, you got this, buddy. You got this. Come on. Frank, come on. Let's go. Chevy, you want to call him in there? Come on. Help me out here. Come on, buddy. You're lucky there's no mosquitoes here. Come on. Come on. It's just me. It's just me. I know. I look like a big blob to you. Come on. You are so close. In the door. In the door. In the door. Come on. Come on. Yay. It's always like that. Poor guy. I was so impressed with that mower. Like the first time I started it up, like I, I put it all together, assembled it, and then I uh, put oil in it and I went to start it. You don't have to prime it anywhere. There's nowhere to prime these new mowers. I just pulled the cord once fired right up immediately that's an improvement from the old one already <sighs> you ever get that feeling of just being so overwhelmed there's just so much to do all the time so much going on Don't have time for this right now. We gotta get Old Blue ready to go. I gotta be leaving here in like half an hour. We gotta run to Kenora. So I was supposed to run to Kenora today, but that got delayed because of our sewage problem. That got fixed. So it was the, the floater in the sewer tank that floats up when it gets full and then it gets pumped out. Uh, that had to be fixed down inside our sewer tank. So with everything said and done, that was 750 bucks. We needed a, a lawnmower with a bagger because uh, our lawnmower was getting so old and falling apart, it was getting dangerous to use. And uh, also that one didn't have a bagger on it. And Chevy and Frank, both of our dogs, love to eat that grass. And what they do, like I was telling you before, I think, they eat the grass and then they go inside, like where they belong, they live inside with us, and then they throw up the grass. And it's a never ending cycle and very frustrating. So. We got a lawnmower with a bagger now. No, that had to be done. That was $330. So my load got pushed to tomorrow and I spent over a thousand dollars. Life. You young people growing up, yearning for adulthood, wanting to be adults. What are you thinking? <laughs> it's gonna come. It's gonna come one way or another. Just uh, get a helmet. Look at this mess here. Look at this mess. This is not supposed to be this way, but I'm the adult, so it's my responsibility to clean it up. So I have to find the time. Embarrassing even showing this to the internet, but this is a vlog. It's about real life, and I'm sure the majority of you looking at me right now can relate. 
and there's no judgment, I'm sure. And if you want to judge me, well, judge me. What do I care? I, I really don't care. But we'll get it all cleaned up when I have the chance. But for now, let's get Old Blue running. The camper's not in here, if you remember. We rented, uh, we, we pulled it out, out uh, to borrow it to a few friends. And uh, we got had to get it cleaned up anyway, so we pulled it out of here to get it all cleaned out. It's a great excuse to get the shop cleaned out. So after this trip, hopefully I'll have a couple of days at home. And I'm going to spend uh, at least a few hours in here just doing whatever I can. Okay, let's, let's just get out there on the road. I'll feel better once the wheels are turning. I'm just feeling overwhelmed right now. We're in Prada, Manitoba on the way to Kenora. Finally moving. And fuel is still cheaper in Manitoba than in Ontario by quite a bit. Our price is about $1.35 here at the Esso. It's $1.54 per liter over uh, in Ontario and Kenora at the Petrol Pass. 400 feet, turn left on. Trans-Canada Highway, Highway 1. Hold on, hold on, gotta get some fuel first. I haven't fueled up here before, so hopefully it's pretty straightforward. Oh, there are truck-eating potholes here. Yikes. Slow and easy, Josh. Slow and easy. Wow. Easy, easy. Woo. All right. I'm trying to figure out how these pumps work. Fuel her up, and then uh, we'll be loading first thing in the morning. I'm gonna go sleep at the gate tonight, and then we'll head on down to Brainerd. here and I'm parked. There's two other trucks waiting to be loaded in the morning. One beside me is a Super B so I know he's in a little bit of a, I guess we'll call it a different class. He loads different products than me so it shouldn't slow me down in the morning. We'll be loading in two different areas. We're ready. So it was a bit of a chaotic weekend. I know that I didn't explain everything and show everything in detail, but it was just so unbelievably busy and like I was showing a little overwhelming. Uh, my wife and I are somewhat the same, that uh, when there's mess, like physical mess in our house or for me in my shop, it physically affects us and it overwhelms us quickly. Her more so, more so than me. She keeps our house spotless. I'm very thankful that she does. I got very lucky. But uh, she cannot stand things being out of order in the house. More so than me. But in the shop, I'm somewhat the same way. I'm not, you know, losing sleep over it or anything, but, you know, when things get moved around, when things change, eh, it bothers me a little bit. And it was a little bit of a rough weekend for other things, but we did have some really good points in the weekend. We had our Mother's Day outing. We went to the Leaf in Assiniboine Park, which is like an indoor greenhouse, botanical gardens, like tropical uh, garden. Uh, it's like you can walk through it. I got a bunch of footage from there. I'm sure I've shared it with you already. It was really neat. We took her there for Mother's Day, and then after that we went to... Uh, tour around one of the richest neighborhoods in Winnipeg called Tuxedo just to look at all the massive expensive houses that we'll never afford or live in. That was fun. And then we went to uh, have dinner at Olive Garden where Theo was very very chatty the whole time. Happy chatty. The whole time. He was just having a blast just screaming da, 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 da. the whole meal. <laughs> Uh, and then, uh, well, you saw today our sewer backed up. We had to get that uh, floater valve replaced. My truck is coming up on a safety very soon here too. I'm gonna have to get it safety next month. And uh, oh, 
so many things all at once, but we can we can handle this. I just need a good sleep. And you know what usually calms me down and what sorts my head out when my head sort of starts spinning and I become a little overwhelmed? You know what sorts it out the best? Working. Getting out there, putting freight on the trailer, tying it down, and carrying it down the road. That's the best therapy for me. So that's what we'll do tomorrow. So I'm not really sure how this vlog turned out. I'm not sure how all of my weekend vlogs turned out. Uh, I had a bunch of footage filmed. I have it all on my computer. I made sure I didn't lose it this time. <laughs> but I'm not sure what I'm going to make of it. Because uh, I got a little bit over here, a little bit over there. We filmed a little bit in that uh, indoor greenhouse, indoor tropical forest type thing. Uh, the leaf, that's what it's called to be accurate. I guess called the leaf. Uh... A little bit of footage here and there, so I'm sure I put something together. But uh, for the rest of this week now, for the foreseeable future, I'm going to have to run pretty hard. Because the expenses don't take breaks. They don't take holidays. I would love to have a holiday, go somewhere with palm trees. But uh, my bills, they they just don't seem to want to have a, have a holiday. So we're going to keep working hard. This week, when I'm filming this, is the DOT Blitz. So I'm expecting to see increased activity at the scales and inspection stations. <sighs> I'm not worried about it. Like getting inspected, it's just, you all know, even if you know your truck and you're, you're you know, you're pretty confident in your trucks, like, uh, uh, a build in your truck's soundness, whatever, you know what I mean. You're, you have full confidence in that your truck is in good working order. You still don't want to have someone combing over your truck if it's not completely necessary. <laughs> it's still nerve wracking, stressful. Because what if they find something that you missed, right? Then it's always possible. It's just scary and fines are steep. That's why you, you gotta do pre-trip every day. You gotta make sure that you're on top of it. And I think I am. I'm like 99.9999999999999% sure that I, I stay on top of everything. I'm not too worried about it. But what about that, you know, that 0.000000000001% chance that I missed something? It's probably higher now. Like, <laughs> I'm human. I'm human. I miss things. I'm not perfect. It's a probably much higher chance than that that I miss something. Oh, and what if something like from your pre-trip to the inspection breaks? So it's fine in the morning. You do your pre-trip inspection. Everything's fine. But it breaks going down the road. And before you notice it, you pull into a scale. They pull you in for an inspection. Oh, look, that's broken. That was not broken half an hour ago. Does he believe you that you say it wasn't like that when you did your pre-trip? Up to their discretion. Could be a massive fine, could be just bad luck, could be a fix-it ticket, where you just get a ticket and you get told to fix it. Now, I'm not going to worry too much about it, though. I'm not going to worry. Uh, I've been doing this a while now. i uh, been on the road 17 years this summer. Been doing this over the road, dealing with these blitzes and inspections for 13 years this summer. And I've been fine every single time. So let's knock on wood. And uh, it's going to be a good week. Yeah. Take care, everybody. i got to go to bed. I'm pretty tired. And uh, tomorrow we'll be trucking. Let's load up some, some wood here. Let's put a tarp over it. And let's take it down to Minnesota. I'll see you tomorrow. Stay safe out there. Drive safe. And use your turn signals. Okay? And I'll leave you on that note. Turn signals.